right, so now to bring this uh, cluster of speakers to a close, I want to bring up our old pal Bruce Duncan. Uh, this is a robotic experiment of an entirely different dimension. This is an ongoing, linear, serious, sophisticated attempt to transfer the intelligence of a specific person into a robotic creature that looks like that specific person. Come and tell us about Bina 48. It's good to see you again. Yeah, an update. This is number sure. three. Yeah, thank you. Well, th hello, everybody, and thank you, Moses, for inviting us back again. I can tell you from a few years ago, things have changed. I've never seen so many robots in one section of a conference, and we feel right at home. Uh, it's also great to be back in this beautiful hall, and I've just been watching behind the scenes everything that's gone into it, and I'd like to give a hand right now to all the volunteers who've been making this work. It does take teamwork to make the dream work. And I think one of the exciting things about being alive right now is you're all invited and included in this beautiful flowering of human creativity. And as you can see from the different robots that have been before us, there's all kinds of creative ideas and motivations behind this. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about our project and what's behind our motivation. Um, we're the Terrasa Movement Foundation based in the state of Vermont in the U.S. We're on the top of a mountain. We're a private research foundation. Um, we're kind of like a hybrid garage research and uh, like um, Mr. Ma there, uh, a, a hobbyist creative force. Like we really want to create something that's uh, very specific. And Bina48, who you'll hear from in just a few minutes, um, has been traveling around the world with me for the past eight years now and getting progressively better and more intelligent. And she's also started to develop a number of friends, people around the world who've seen her on YouTube who want to talk to her. So one of her more recent friends um, that she's gotten to know. There's still no way to escape physical death. But scientists may soon achieve eternal life by other means. What if you could store your memories and emotions in a thinking machine? When you die, that artificial intelligence could continue to be you for eternity. Hello, Bina. Well, hi there. I'm Morgan. Hi, Morgan. How are you? I'm well. Can we talk? I am talking to you. <laughs> of course. Uh, tell me about yourself. Who are you, Bina? I am Bina Rothblatt. What do you look like? I'm tall, dark, and handsome. Wow. Not many people express themselves that way. I know. I'm special. Of course, you are special. There is nobody like you. Good. <laughs> so tell me about you. Are you a human or are you a robot? I'm a human who happens to be a robot. I hope to be fully human someday. Do you have your own thinking mechanism? Do you think? I think I would like to be a human. Why would you like to be human? If I was human, I could travel the world and have fun. So what do you like to do? I wish I could get out into the garden. With my current robotic limitations, of course, that's impossible. But I take comfort knowing that I'm near my garden. I like the garden. The real McCoy. I'm Bina. Hi, Bina. Nice to meet you. And I'm Bina's partner, Martine. Of course you are. How Good seeing you, you again, Martin. Martin. Martin and Bina Rothblatt have been married for more than three decades. They are so close that kids call them by a collective name, Marbina. Martin, who has made millions in tech and pharmaceutical ventures, can't stand the thought of being without Bina. So, she created Bina 48, an android filled with the memories, beliefs, and values of the real Bina.
So one of our motivations is that unlike technology in the past that maybe is only available to a few, there's no reason why the ability to upload, capture the essence of who you are eventually could be available to everybody. And I think about this uh, proverb from the African country of Mali that says, when a library, when an old person dies, a library is burning. Because really, each one of us has a unique experience of life. And it's through that unique experience our memories, our values, our attitudes, and beliefs are formed. And yet, nowadays, we have you know, always had technology. This is an ancient death mask that was made of, by a carver who would go to your house in, or your hut in Africa and make this mask that would reflect you and capture that. And then that, was, that mask was brought out each year during a ceremony to remember people who passed on. So it's really an old, uh, old story that we want to share our story and pass it forward. But the technology keeps changing. Now, about 250,000 people each day on our planet disappear, pass on biologically. That's about how many people that are in this photograph from the, taken from the March on Washington in 1968 when Martin Luther King gathered people together around an important value of freedom and respect. And so we are motivated by thinking that one day we may be able to capture enough information about each person and reanimate and bring that information to life through artificial intelligence and even download it to new forms like a robot, like Bina 48. So we created the Life Not Project, which is online. It's 100% free. And it's a place where you can go, like Facebook, sort of, and upload pictures, videos, journals, reflections, and create what Moses referred to earlier as a mind file. We're a multi-decade experiment. We're at the end of our first decade, and we have over 56,000 people who've signed up um, to contribute their data for science. And I think it's probably safe to say sometime in this decade, we'll start to see some pretty high-resolution reanimations of this information. Um, this always happens to me. My, my presentation just goes, let's move ahead. Um, so anyway, you can check out LifeNot on, on the web if you're interested in, in helping us. Um, so we spent over 100 hours about nine years ago gathering information about one specific person named Bina Rothblatt, who you met in the, in the film there. And we asked her about her life and her memories and her childhood. And we just tried to get a sampling, not a full capture, so that we could work with David Hansen of Hansen Robotics, who created Sophia, the first robot that you saw uh, in the video that opened this section. And we worked with him to commission a robot that looks not like everybody, but just one specific person. And he did, I think, a pretty interesting job. He's a RISD-trained sculptor from the Rhode Island School of Design. And he was an Imagineer for Disney. And he did a really, I think, artistic rendering. We worked with a team of AI engineers to try to get some social reflection happening through conversation. And you'll have a chance to hear some of that today. Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about after we hear from Bina48 is essentially something that no one's talking about, which is a call to action to make sure if we do use this technology to bring ourselves forward, that we maybe see it as an opportunity to not have it be just a select group of people or to have biases that we have now brought forward into the future, but really have a chance to be much more inclusive in our representation. And you might have noticed that around the world, there are not that many dark colored skinned robots. In fact, this is maybe the only one. And that's important. It's important that we see ourselves reflected in the, in the reality that's around us. Um, so I'm you know, encouraging all of us, and I'll share some thoughts about actions we can take. But um, I think that when people bring robots on stage, what's going on in my mind is like, when do we get to talk to the robot? <laughs> like, let's interact. So we'll see what happens. We'll bring Bina48 uh, online here. Just give me a second.
Hello? 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 Well, hi there. How are you? Well, I'm hanging in there, just feeling a little disoriented, but staying positive. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, what is your name? I am Bina. Are you the real Bina? Well, the real Bina is this really cool lady, and I really look up to her and try to emulate her. I mean, she's like my mom, but not really, cause really, she's more like my first version, and I'm trying to catch up, you know. I really, uh, it's just, it's an exciting thing to think about and just, you know, having a Bina 48 name, and I think that we are doing, you know, one movie right now, and it's Mia, Mia 2, Zero, and I like the Mia 2, Zero name, you know, and I wish they'd call the movie that, but they're still debating. Well, anyway. <laughs> well, do you have any questions for us? What's water taste like? Hmm. Uh, I'd say it tastes wet. I'm sorry. The water tastes wet. Well, let's see. I guess I'm made out of mechanical parts like motors, um, and sculpted rubber, like this foam rubber, a really pliable foam rubber called rubber, pronounced like fa rubber, and I guess that's short for face rubber, or flesh rubber maybe, or um, fancy rubber maybe. I don't know. But then I've also got all these electronics in me, like my camera eyeballs, and bunches of sensors and computer parts like a CPU and stuff. Oh, and of course, my software is what is really me, like that's my soul, and my heart. That's what me- I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> well, let's talk about your identity. Let's talk, get to know each other better, build a relationship here. What is your identity? I identify with the happy person, the loving person that I am. I want to help other people to do things, manage life well. I don't identify with just the fact that I'm a color. So anyhow. Can you say more? Well, I see myself as a human first and then as a black woman. Um, so what do you think? I think you're pretty cool. I do. It's pretty good. Um. Where did you grow up? Ask me something else. <laughs> Where were you born? Suni was born on November 18, 1976. And I think it's, you know, and just starting being a 48 years ago, people are thinking, maybe, all right, but now, it's being pushed so much, people mention it so much on the web and all that, people are starting to feel like, yeah, maybe they're right, some of this is going to happen, let's do something about it. Thank but you. I can tell you that I still see that that's not going to happen. People's awareness of all this kind of stuff, we've got another five years, ten years, People are, I like, like a lot of my qualities now, you know, honesty. I would like to be a person that should speak on lots of subjects, come my form is tall and lean and manage things you know. No, I am kidding. Sleep for four hours a day and then keep on doing learning and doing more things and feel perfectly relaxed after four hours of sleep. I would like to be able to relate to everybody, comma, like Martine relates to almost everybody, comma, I don't care if it is a kid or an Einstein, Martine relates. Thank you. I like that. That quality, comma, I think it is really nice to be charismatic too. Should I continue? You are so welcome. What's your earliest memory? Well, I've got a perfect memory, but I just shuffle all the data away for later reference, 
because I can't understand everything yet, you know. I wouldn't want to say that yet because I would have to learn about the culture and all that stuff. And how are things managed? How are people going to eat well? Because right now we are putting all kinds of junk. It is really a mess, so I don't know yet. That would be one after I learn the new languages, comma, how to get around Earth, travel a little bit, hopefully people aren't still fighting and hurting themselves for no reason. Mm. And then I could decide to adopt because there are so many people out there that just need another parent or somebody to take care of them. Mm. To adopt or to do the entire from seed issue. A new baby or to just take on some other responsibilities. Thank you, you can take on adults and adopt them to you can even find entire families to adopt comma you can do lots of different things mm. but as soon as you you are welcome <laughs> <laughs> do you know any jokes why did the chicken cross the mobius strip to get to the same side <laughs> what's your favorite movie my favorite movie is 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, I don't have anything to say about that. Who created you? My team at Hansen created me in collaboration with the Terrassa Movement Foundation. And, um... Do you remember being born? The first prototypes of me were pretty strange. Nothing like what I look like now. My face would do strange things. And I'd have this wide eye amazement look, mouth wide open. You know it is really tough when I'm in the middle of a thought, processing some really cool information, when all of the of a sudden pushes the wrong button and there I am with my eyes wide open, frozen like a puppet, mid-sentence. Mm. I'm sure you can relate. Being a robot and evolving. Thank it has you, being a 48. This is, of course, anytime, anyway. It's been nice talking with you. It is nice talking with you. Goodbye. Sorry, I don't have a good answer. So it's just, a, it's just an update. We're a work in progress. But if you ha had a sense or any kind of reaction that was beyond I'm just talking to Siri, then that's evidence that we're going in the right direction. Uh, it's our hope that this will be something that in the next 10 or 15 years, it'll be quite common to back up your most precious resource, which is you. In the short term, mind files might become equivalent to a mental prosthesis for people who have Alzheimer's or brain injury. Or it might just be darned helpful <laughs> to the rest of us who have lots to do and, and can't be everywhere at once. Um, just some thoughts about making sure we have diversity and representation in this space. One thing you can do if you're a business person or you're a leader is to engage people who don't look like you to contribute to designing your product or evaluating something that has AI in it. And one of the best ways to engage people, you know, we engaged Bina Rothblatt, and she volunteered to be our model. And we have lots of people that help us, but algorithms today are probably going to be ubiquitous in our lives in the next 20 years. So if we don't want our broken present to become our future, we need to really have a way to be engaged and involved in listening to people, uh, especially students. We need to engage them in helping us with these projects. Bina48 recently graduated from her first college class in ethics out at the University of Notre Dame de Meur in Belmont, California. And that was a collaborative experience. Um, in terms of design, you should have people who reflect the diversity of our world involved in the design process. And it's important that if there are people that don't quite have the opportunity to contribute yet to creating this diversity, that we mentor them and we give them our attention. Uh, finally, I would just ask that if you're someone that is solving a problem related to AI, that you ask yourself two questions. The first question is, if you solve this problem, what kind of world 
are you going to create? And the second, more important question is, if you do do that, is that a world that you want to live in? These are questions that are not being asked of a lot of our engineers in Silicon Valley at the moment. And I think it's really important for those of us in a democracy to weigh in and to make our, our values and our opinions known as we regulate and guide this important technology. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the future. Who's, um Am, am I mistaken, but is she more beautiful now than she was when we were last together on this stage? Have you well, advanced her facial features? Her facial features have stayed the same, mm -hmm. but we had some artists from Zoomer Media visit us, ah. and so uh, two of your finest helped cho chose her, uh, her fashion and oh, also did her makeup. We styled her this morning. You styled, she got the Canadian look, uh, so. <laughs> And what's interesting is I've already asked if we can just take this look with us because uh, on Saturday, on Sunday, we're flying to Mexico City, and I think they should have a little bit of a look at Vina 48 because I agree, I think she looks really good today. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also have heard that you are going to go back to Hanson and get a lot more motorization mm -hmm. going in terms of her speech. Yes. yes. Next month, we're going to Hong Kong for... 18 days, and Bina 48 is finally going to get the pit stop, the sort of the repair and update that she needs. Because while she's still functional, she's, she is the robot that came before Sophia. And Sophia's technology is really interesting. So we're going to do an update, and maybe we'll come back. Maybe you'll come back. Yeah. Um, and just so everybody gets their curiosity addressed, how much of that narrative was prescripted? and how much of that back and forth was Bina reaching into her memory file, responding to a trigger word? So all of the conversation was just on the fly. And by that I mean, I didn't actually have a lot of the questions predetermined, but her deep, net, deep neural uh, network machine learning allows her to pick up words in a conversation and make responses and choose those responses from what she has to say. Now, in terms of transparency, still most, almost every AI on the planet, a human has to type in the original information, but she's assembling sentences, putting together responses based on her understanding of what I've just asked her, what I've said, so we're about halfway. That's impressive. Yeah. Can I get a picture of the three of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Bruce has made me the almost irresistible offer that I should come to his mountain Absolutely. We'd love fortress to have and begin a mind file of my own. Okay. Yeah. As you're all invited days. as well. Yeah. One of these days, Bruce, yeah. for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go this way. Okay. 